Hey everyone, we are back here with another episode of the Happy Even After podcast, and I'm going to just jump right in and introduce you to today's guest. His name is Brad Walsh, and he's a father to two daughters, age 19 and 21. He's a husband, a professional boudoir photographer, and a host of the Empowerography podcast, which is a podcast whose mission it is to empower women one episode at a time. Brad's wife and daughters, along with his mother and grandmother, are his why and his inspiration. So Brad has firsthand come to experience the struggle that they've had with positive body image, and he's made it his mission to help other women and put out the message of empowering women through any of their struggles, including body positivity. So Brad, welcome. Good morning, Renee. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor and a pleasure to be here with you today. Oh, I'm so glad that we're able to connect. Um, You're in the hot seat this time. I was on your podcast and you asked some really, really hard questions. So I hope I can return the favor today. (laughs) Oh, thanks. I'm looking forward to it. (laughs) So let's start with your why, because I know that there's someone out there who's like, all right, why is this dude talking about women's empowerment? Like, how can he possibly know about our struggles, which is the exact reason why I wanted to have you on here because you're coming from a different perspective. Yeah, um, well, my struggle started, well, the, the the reasoning behind it started with, well, we'll go way back to when I was a kid. Um, my mom was married for 15 years. She left my biological father when I was 10. She had had enough. He was running around on her having an affair. So we had to deal with divorced parents growing up in a, a split home. Um, and my mom just... Thinking back on the situation now as an adult male, the incredible strength and courage and resilience my mom had to pick up my brother and I and just leave. She had had enough. He, Like I said, he was running around on her having an affair and she had had enough. And and, I mean, back then, the women were the ones who stayed home to raise the kids while the husband went out to work to make the money to support the family. So she didn't have money saved up. She had to reintegrate herself back into the working world after being out of work for over 10 years because she stayed home to raise my brother and I. So she did exactly that. We moved into a one bedroom apartment. My mom slept on a couch. My brother and I shared bunk beds and she had to find a job. So she went out, she got a part-time job working as a cashier at, at that time it was called A&P. It's now called Dominion or Metro now. Anyways, we moved out and um, when my mom was at work, my grandmother would step in and and help raise us and look after us. So I've always had those two women in my life as a constant and incredible pillars of strength showing me what it is to be strong and courageous and resilient as women. Um, And then of course, going growing up and, and just having these two role models to follow and learn from, I eventually of course got married and we have two daughters and they went through at a very young age in in elementary school a lot of bullying my youngest was bullied by both boys and girls verbally and physically Mm -hmm. and my oldest was bullied by girls verbally and the incredible struggles that they had to go through and deal with that and as a parent of course that's the last thing you want your one of the last things you want your kids to have to deal with is bullying and I think what the worst part of that whole situation was seeing the effects that it had on the girls carry through with them to the different stages of their lives from elementary school when it first started to carry through to their teenage years in high school and now in their young adult lives the effects are still very prevalent so these five along with my wife my daughters my wife my grandmother my mother these five women are a huge I mean they are it they are the reason for all of it for the photography and for the podcast and it's my way of saying thank you and giving back to women in any way that I can to just to say thank you for what these five women have brought to my life and done for me throughout my life. Oh my gosh, there's so much to unpack here. Um, <laughs> and I have so many questions, but let me go back to your mother and grandmother mm-hmm. and go back mm-hmm. to that story because one of the things that I hear over and over again from Um, the woman that I work with is it's too hard to leave. I don't have a job. Um, Did you actually witness the struggle that your mom went through in terms of how to make, how she made that decision and she was going to do it no matter what, and she was going to figure it out? 
Um, somewhat. I mean, I was young. I was only 10. So she tried to shelter us or, or protect us from seeing that side of things. But I mean, I saw little things as a kid. I saw my mom sleeping on the couch for yeah. a year or two before she left. So mm-hmm. I saw things like that. Um, and of course, her being home with us up until we were, I was 10, my brother was eight. And then all of a sudden she had to go out to work to make money. So I saw that in terms of the struggle, I saw that bit of it. Um, I think my grandmother was a big, big help in giving my mom the strength and the courage to do it. She encouraged her and told her that she would help support her in any way she could to help her get through this, this tumultuous time and this difficult time. And of course, that's where she stepped. That was part of her, I guess, support system or duty in helping my mom by being there to help raise us. I mean, my grandmother and I were incredibly close. She was like a second mother to me. Mm -hmm. So I always had that relationship with her. I guess that just kind of enforced things there while she was looking after us and and helping out my mom. Mm. Oh gosh. I imagine your mom is just such a strong person to make such a hard decision back Mm -hmm. then. You yeah, know, yeah. And, I mean, like I said, that's that's the, the time when women stayed home to yeah. raise their kids. So she had no choice. She had no option. She had to support her children. So she decided that this is these are the steps steps I have to take in order to make this happen, and also provide for my children at the same time. So, as a child of divorce, do you mm-hmm. think that that has impacted your relationships as an adult in any way? Um, no, I don't, I, not in a negative way for sure. Um, I realized that divorce happens. It was a lot of the kids growing up in school. I was, I was an odd person, odd one out. A lot of my mm-hmm. friends weren't from divorced families. Yeah. So, but no, I don't think it re- affected my, my view on relationships. I just knew that he ran around on her and no one should stay, whether it's a, a man or a woman, no, sh- no one should stay in that type of situation, in my opinion. And she did what she had to do for self-preservation and for her kids. Yeah. So now let's talk about your daughters. Um, They Mm -hmm. went through something, I imagine it was really traumatic for them at the time, is bullying. What do you think is happening there? Like, what's going on that we're seeing girls bullying other girls? Like, why is this prevalent in our schools? I think it starts at home, to be honest. I really do. I think that's the parent. Because... I'm, I'm going to say one of the one of the kids that was bullying my youngest was a boy, and the principal's response to that was, "Well, they, he has it hard at home." Well, that's mm-hmm. not an answer. That that yeah. doesn't excuse or permit the 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 child to do that to another child. There's no excuse for it. It should not be happening. And this is where schools and teachers and and principals need to step in as well. Like I said, it all starts at home. The parents right. need to teach their kids that. You can't put your hands on other kids. You shouldn't pick on other kids. It's it's not right. That is incredibly damaging much later on down the road, as I've seen with my daughters. Yeah, it's it's so powerful. And this goes back to that idea that you stay in an unhealthy marriage for the sake of the kids. But yet so many times kids are picking up these habits and they're seeing one of the parents bully the, the other parent and yeah. then they go to school and they do this or they, yeah. they're they seeing the fighting and the conflict and this is the outcome from it. So we think as parents, it's like, oh, if we stay for our kids, we're, we're, we're doing what's best for them. But no, the impact is so far beyond the home. And, you know, I think that that's so important to highlight because sometimes leaving is the the best thing we can do for absolutely i think that i think staying does much more damage than leaving yeah. because the kids will be happier in the long run if you if you get out of that situation and they're not exposed to that on a constant basis i think that another part of the reason for kids bullying is self-esteem issues on their own maybe they've been picked on by their parents and treated that way by their parents so they in turn take it out on others that's i think that's a big part of it as well yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about your boudoir photography. Sure. Um, because I love boudoir. I think it's awesome. I think it's empowering. Can you just mm-hmm. share a little bit about like what it is and why would a woman want to do this? It's honestly, it is one of the most incredible things I've ever seen as a photographer to see the vulnerability and all of that unfold before my eyes as a photographer is one of the most incredible experiences I could ever witness. It's honestly, I compare it to 
watching a butter a caterpillar transform into a butterfly mm-hmm. when when the woman a lot of the case and i won't say all but a lot of the cases the woman comes into the studio of course she's very nervous and vulnerable i mean she's going to be photographed in her underwear right so it's it's a vulnerable time for sure but i think that the most important part for me how i work things with my clients is establishing a rapport and that that sense of trust between client and photographer that has to that's paramount you have to establish that ahead of time so with me i start right from the very first phone call the inquiry where we talk about things and and what they're looking for i have a questionnaire that i fill out that i had that i go over i do a a pre-shoot consultation where I have a, a list of questions I go through with my potential clients, and one of the f- one of the first things and most important things I ask my clients is, "Why are you doing this? Why do you want to do a boudoir shoot?" And a lot of the time, the women will say, "Well, it's I want I want to give these images to my partner. I'm doing this for my partner, my husband, my wife, whatever the case may be." And to me, I, I kind of put the brakes on right there and say, "That's great. That's wonderful that you want to do that." But first and foremost, this has got to be about you and you're doing this for you to make you feel good, to make you feel confident, to, to show that you love your body. And yes, you'll have these images. They're a byproduct of the experience. The experience is what it's all about. It's that feeling of empowerment and feeling of confidence and feeling that, damn, I'm beautiful. This is great. I love this experience. That's what it's about, the experience. Sure, you can gift the images to your partner afterwards, absolutely. But I want you, first and foremost, to have that experience and also to have those images to look back on 10 years from now, 15 years from now and say, wow, look at how hot I was 15 years ago. (laughs) This is amazing. That's what it's about. It's about the experience. But for me, establishing that rapport and that, that trust between my clients and myself. And I also... Because I think that there's a a myth associated with boudoir where you have to wear lingerie. You don't. And I tell all my clients this in our pre-shoot consultation is you don't have to wear lingerie if you don't want to. 98% of the women want to, but it's not a necessity. It's not a requirement. You can wear whatever makes you feel beautiful, whatever makes you feel sexy, whatever makes... If that so happens to be jean shorts and a tank top, great, let's go. You can rock that. That's totally fine. Yeah. So uh, those are two of the most important questions I ask and, and establish that to get that rapport established. And of course, I let my clients know leading up to the shoot that they can contact me anytime they want with any questions they might have, any any insecurities or what, call me anytime. No problem. I'll, I'll walk you through whatever you need to do. And I send a, pinch, a link to a Pinterest board that I have created for my clients to give them ideas for outfits and all things like that. So it's just building that relationship. I think any woman who gets divorced should have one of these. Like, I yes. think like that's the thing you sign the agreement, sign, still to <laughs> deliver it. And then you make that appointment because really at the time that you're going through that divorce, you feel sometimes a little broken, yeah. a little beat down, totally like you don't feel sexy. And that's like the thing to be like, all right, here's my power. Like, it's just absolutely such, it's celebrate such- you. Yeah, absolutely. I love it. All yeah. right. So let's let's talk about your podcast now. Yes. Why did you start it? And like share a little bit about what type of interviews you're doing because it is, it is awesome. It is such an amazing podcast. Thank you. Well, again, the podcast is was really um, born out of COVID. Um, at the time, back in 2020, around March, obviously when COVID hit, I was running my photography business and that brought everything to a halt. So I couldn't be shooting during the pandemic and I'm a creative. So I, d- I had to do something. I just thought, and I've been thinking about starting a podcast for a while. I just never got around to doing it. Um, so I thought this is the perfect time. And I heard a lot of people complaining about the fact that they're bored and they're stuck at home and they don't know what to do. And it was just very negative on and on with the negativity. I just thought I can't deal with that. I'm going to take advantage of this time and do something positive. I'm going to flip the script on this and do something good with the time that we've all been given. This is the perfect opportunity to create this podcast and, and highlight women and amplify their voices and share their stories. So it was really born out of COVID. It's, it's really, uh, Again, a thank you and um, an honor, I guess, to my grandmother, my mom, and and my my wife and my daughters, and just I want to give back and and create this community with interviewing these women, giving them the opportunity to share their stories, giving them a platform to amplify their voices and elevate them, because I think that 
I mean, I don't know of any other men that provides a platform like this. I know there's tons of women out there who have empowerment podcasts and that's awesome. That's great. But I don't know of any other men doing it. So I think that this also has given me a, a niche that I've carved out for myself with this podcast for and, and showing men that we can stand beside our women and help elevate them and amplify their voice. They need to be elevated. They've been kept down by men for so long. We need to shift the mindset on all of this and change this. I mean, look at look at corporate America. I come from a corporate background and I've seen women and how, how they've been treated in that world in terms of not getting equal pay for doing the same job as their male counterparts and not enough women in C-suite level positions in these corporations. And I'm seeing a shift now where I think women are tired of that treatment and saying, you know what, enough of this. I'm going to go out on my own. I'm going to be my own CEO. So I want to help highlight these women and amplify their voices. And no, the podcast isn't strictly focused on entrepreneurial women. Women who have stories to share. I'm more than willing to, to have you on the podcast and share your story. But it's just my way of giving back to women um, and, and highlighting them and sharing their stories, helping to get the word out there. I want to explode this movement onto the world. What role do you believe that men have in empowering women, just in general? I know what you're doing specifically. But I think what it's about our duty. Men? I think we should be doing it. Women need to be on the same level as us. They've been, as I said, they've been kept down by men, old white men. That that old boys' <laughs> club mentality of the yeah. 1940s still exists, and that to me is disgusting. That that is even still there. So part of my hope with the podcast is that can be a spoke in the wheel for change around that mindset. So I think it's our duty. We need more men to get on board with this movement and this type of thing to help lift women up. That's where they need to be. How has that impacted your role as a father to daughters? Um, it, it's shown them that men, that men can be good and, and do good things and, and stand beside women. I mean, they see that with how I am with my wife they know how women it's a good example i think for me as well to show them that this is how you should be treated this is how you should be respected you deserve that if i mean at the very least you deserve that respect so i think it's just providing them with a role model showing that men can be good and they do treat women well and that's what you deserve as girls growing up into young women you deserve to be treated with respect yeah, you know, it, so anyone listening, ladies out there, like Brad is an example. There are good guys out there. And I think that so many women get caught up in the their their current spouse. They're in something really unhealthy and they're like, "Well, what if I don't find someone outside the, you know, out the other side of the divorce and should I just stay with this person who treats me poorly and is disrespectful and doesn't value me or doesn't love me the way I want to be loved?" because I don't know if I'm going to find something else out the other side. And I think this is like just a really good example of there are so many good men out there um, who are wanting to uh, bring to a relationship everything that you're talking about. And so you don't have to settle. And it's okay to say that I want more from that. And I mean, what a gift to your daughters. To Thank teach you. Them yeah. that, what... That's one thing we've al we always told the girls from a very young age is that don't don't let anyone tell you that you can't do anything. You can accomplish anything you want in life and never, ever, ever depend on a man for anything. You depend on yourself because when it all comes down to it, when it's all said and done, that's all you have is yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So don't depend on a man for anything. Don't put that much energy into that. I'm not saying don't have relationships, but don't be dependent upon someone. Yeah. You got to, You have to make your own way. Yeah. And then you show up as a very different person in a relationship when you are entirely independent because yes. it's not this codependency you're showing up as like hey i'm a whole person on my own and you know it's like jerry Maguire. i hate the line <laughs> i hate it the you complete me line i knew you're gonna say that <laughs> it like rubs me the wrong yeah. way and every time i hear it it like makes my blood boil but it's like no neither person should need someone else to complete them. That's I agree with you 100%. You come together as two independents to form yeah. that unit, but you're not depend you don't complete each other. That's just that is ridiculous. <laughs> it's a ridiculous sentiment and thought. 
Yeah. So what what's on tap for you? What um, what do you have coming up next with your projects? And where can we find you and connect with you? And how can people certainly find your? Um, well, let's break it down. Let's start sure. with um, how can someone work with you as a photographer, and then how can someone listen to everything you're offering the world through your podcast? All right. So for photography, women can reach out to me through my website. Um, I also photograph couples as well because I think that's an important thing to highlight as well. I've, I've done couple shoots and those are fun and interesting. And so they can reach out to me through either they can catch me on Instagram at visuphoria, V I S U P H O R I A underscore photography on Instagram or www.visuphoria.ca. Um, and as far as the podcast goes, my website, www.empowerographypodcast.com. Dot com, and I also have my Instagram page, Empowerography Podcast, so you can find me there. Uh, if you're interested in being guests, because I'm always looking for women to be guests on the show, reach out to me through Instagram. You can reach out to me on Facebook, um, through the website, however you want. You just feel free to reach out. Brad, what's one of the, your favorite stories you've heard since you started this podcast? Oh, there's so many. I mean, all I honestly, it's hard to choose. I mean, every single woman's story is incredible. Your story was incredible. Everyone, they're so individualistic and they're so inspiring. I honestly pull inspiration from every single one of them. But I think one of the favorites was probably a woman named Barbie List. She was my 100th episode and she, her daughter was the victim of rape mm -hmm. uh, when she was younger and her story of how she helped her daughter through that experience and the whole justice system around that experience they went a different route they went through a restorative justice method hmm. as opposed to the regular court system so that was probably one of my favorites it was just a very interesting spin on how they took that through the courts or through the legal um system and yeah just incredibly inspiring hmm. and so you talk about we we've, we've been talking about empowering women in general but just to focus a little bit on the body positivity part yep. of that um is there anything that men can do to help encourage body positivity in women because that's a really hard struggle that a lot of women have it's usually you know women are their own worst critic um so how can men help i would say just start with the women in your life tell them how much you appreciate them tell them how much you love how they look that they're beautiful the way they are they don't need to change now of course if you, if the women want to change because this is a common thing that comes up when i'm speaking with potential clients well i need to lose 10 pounds before i do a shoot or i need to lose 15 pound or five no you don't let's celebrate you right now because you are beautiful just the way you are i think that's a big 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 part of that i mean with our daughters, we were always constantly, t you don't need to look a certain way. And yes, of course, social media plays a big part, especially in the younger generation, but you're beautiful the way you are. You don't need to look like this. That is fake. That's not real. What you're seeing on social yeah. media, 95% of that is not real. So yeah. don't measure yourself. The only thing you need to worry about is you and feeling good and comfortable in your skin and who you are. And just talk, continually talk about it. Reinforce that with, with your kids, with the women in your life, constantly telling them how beautiful they are and, and that you're there to support them and listen when they want to talk. When they're feeling that way, hold space for them. Give them the space to talk. I don't think I've ever heard a man say that. Like I've heard that. <laughs> I, I've heard it like women will say hold space because the common, I think like the common uh, theme is like men want to fix and they want to yes. offer solutions. Like my yeah. husband's totally guilty of this and he'll want to provide a solution. And it's not, it's, it, it's it, the good intentions are really good behind it. Yeah. But sometimes just this idea of holding space is so valuable. Um, mm -hmm. And like, what does that mean to you? Just listening, provide that ear. Like you said, women don't necessarily want a fix or a solution. They just want someone to listen. Yeah. People, I mean, let's be honest, in general, people want to be heard. So just listen. Some we have two ears and one mouth for a reason. Mm -hmm. Use your ears and just listen sometimes. I love that. Um 
So you had said something about a client saying that they needed to attain some sort of body ideal mm-hmm. before they show up for that thing. And I mm-hmm. that's something that I've heard from clients as well. Like I yeah. had a client who said, I can't start dating again until I lose 15 pounds, um, which is so heartbreaking to me because it it's like it's you are worthy exactly yes. the way you are and you Absolutely. don't need to to change. What role do you think that social media is having on our own body image? Oh, it has a huge impact. Because we're see, we're I mean, let's be honest, we're constantly bombarded with video clips and and images. It's coming at us like at a breakneck speed, and we're led to believe that this is how you're supposed to look. Look at all the magazines out there. Look yeah. at the media. This is how you're supposed to look. I mean, now companies I think are starting to realize that you know what we have to shift our way of thinking and shift what we're showing people because it's not like that. These images on the magazines and in social media, half of them are airbrushed or it's about yeah. posing and lighting when people are taking selfies. It plays a huge part and we just need to keep reinforcing that that's not real. Don't don't base or don't measure yourself by that. Yeah. Just yeah. be who you authentically naturally are. Jamie Kern is one of my favorite examples of that. She was the founder of, or is the founder of It Cosmetics. And so she was on QVC and she tells about when she had the opportunity to bring her makeup line to QVC, they they wanted her to bring in all of these models with perfect skin. And she was like, but my product is for someone like me who doesn't have perfect <laughs> skin. And she she dug down on that that concept. And they're yeah. like, you're making a mistake. You need to make, you need to show people how they want to look rather than who they are and that was the the whole basis of the success of her business was no we're going to we're going to show real people because that's who my product is for and that's i just think that it. that's amazing we, we need more jamie kearns in the world yeah. for sure because that will start the shift i mean and she's obviously starting that shift by taking yeah. that stance and i i admire her so much for that i think that's brilliant we just need more people to get on board with doing that and that will eventually get the snowball rolling and we'll see bigger change but it's a start we have to start somewhere yeah so brad okay final question um what message do you have because i do have some men that listen and they'll 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 reach out and be like where are our episodes like where are all the men so (laughs) i want this last message for you to share with the men who are listening about how they can show up for the woman in their lives just again, be there, hold space, be authentic. Let let these women t- talk, let them tell their stories, let them share how they're feeling. Be there for them, support them, That stand by them. That's, that's the best thing you can do is stand by our women and show them solidarity, show them that you support them. That, yeah. that will go a long, long way. Stand by them. There you go. That's the message from Brad <laughs> Walsh. Um, you are such an inspiration. I really just, I, 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 I love your mission. I love your outlook. I love your positivity and everything that you're doing to try to change the world, like one little bit at a time. Thank you so much, Renee. I appreciate that. Uh, I love the work you're doing too. You are an incredibly beautiful soul and human being and just keep doing what you're doing too. I appreciate the opportunity to be on your podcast and share my story and what I'm doing to, to make my little mark on the world. So I appreciate you and I appreciate you letting me have the, the, the space here to do that. Thanks. And as always, all of the links will be in the show notes so that you can connect with Brad directly. And don't forget, if you're listening and you think you'd be a great guest for Brad's podcast, make sure you reach out to him because he's an awesome interviewer. (laughs) He's going to ask really hard questions, though, (laughs) but all in the best way. It's an awesome podcast. So I can't like encourage everyone to enough to go listen to it. It's just there's so many amazing guests on there and so many different topics. So it's such a great place. Thank you so much, Renee. I appreciate that, and I appreciate you. 